This video right here is for all of my YOLO people. You only live once. Let's live it up. Let's talk about it. going on Closer to God Ministries. Welcome back to another Righteous Spirit-filled episode. Today, I hope to help you get closer to the truth, closer to the kingdom, and closer to the will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We got to give him all the glory, all the praise, all the honor, because he is truly deserving of it. Man, when you think about the generation of millennials that use the, the, the acronym YOLO, you only live once. We use this in a manner where we're like, man, we're gonna take risks even if we know these risks aren't good, but you only live once. Let's live it up. Let's go out with a bang. And I wanna tell you that for many years, man, I lived my life like this. And in doing this, you start to realize in some of the situations that I've been in that you've had some close calls and tomorrow isn't promised. So when you think about you only living once, I wanna tell you where you might possibly be, and where ultimately, according to this book, you wanna go. So there's always, even before you were born, even before you were conceived, God has already known everything. He already knew your parents were gonna come together, we're gonna conceive you, this is why you're here. And in doing this, he already had a purpose for your life, he already had a will for your life, a desire for your life, well before you could think of any of these things that you would you know, later do once you were born and of age to be able to, to have cognitive thinking and understand the world. But when you live life on a, a, a YOLO type standard, a YOLO type aspect, you'll do anything and everything up under the sun. And you name it, I tell you, I, I, I've, I've lived that life to where I wasn't treating life as precious as it was. And I thought that things that I was doing in my life would guarantee me more time. If I do this today, it guarantees that I will be here tomorrow. And I'm here to tell you, all my YOLO people out there, you only live once. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. I don't care what you got in your medicine cabinet. I don't care you know, how you are living today. Tomorrow isn't guaranteed. When God tells you, and when God pulls that plug on you and says, hey, your time's up, either you're coming home to have a celebration or you know where you're going. And this is the reason why I tell you, there is always God's perfect will for your life. And then there is you assuming the risk of what you want to do. And I tell you, you're going to face affliction on both sides, no matter which path you choose. But if you're following God's will for your life, at least you have the strength of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit to help you steer and navigate through these afflictions. When you live on the you only live once type aspect, A, you don't have any strength other than fleshly strength and your intellectual strength to help you navigate through these obstacles, hurdles, trials, afflictions, tribulations, and it's going to be painful. There's going to be a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of chastening that you're going to hold on to and you're going to think that somebody did you wrong. But when you choose God's will for your life, you go down this road and you learn that, hey, just because I'm doing God's work, I'm already expecting to be tested. I'm already expecting these obstacles to be 12 feet tall. And because of the, the power of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, I'm breaking down these walls. I'm breaking down barriers. But you no longer need to worry about the obstacles and the tests that you're going through because you're walking by faith, not by sight. But when you assume the risk of everything that you want to do and find it significant in your life that possibly has no place and earning your spot in the kingdom and having eternal life, you have to assume all of the risk and all of the consequences. Which way will you go? There's always God's will for your life 
his perfect will for your life. And some of us, like myself, it takes a while for us to find it. But it's better to find it sooner than later than to never know what his will was for your life at all. And this is the point that I'm trying to drive home. How do you find out what God's will for your life is? Well, you have to develop a relationship with him. And based upon this, how do you learn who God is? How do you learn who your first love is? Hey, you got to get in this book for yourself and read it yourself. Don't read this to try to get other people to understand before you fully understand. You want to read this so you can read and discover about the one who has never forsaken you. The one that blesses you even through your unjust acts. The one who loves you when it feels like none of your brothers and sisters on this earth love you. When you read this for yourself and you separate from what religion has conditioned you to think and feel, you're going to learn who he is and the power that is possessed by the Holy Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and then you'll be able to move in it as you progress and mature in your relationship with God. Which way will you go? There's always God's will, and then there's assuming the risk of whatever it is you want to do. I hope you go with God's will for your life because it is the only thing that will help you gain access to the kingdom and his promise. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Check out the link in the description because I'm only shooting it gun barrel straight.